Hello again, this is Deval from uh, QNAP. I'm the product manager here at QNAP, and I would like to uh, welcome you guys to uh, for joining our webinar, which is Choosing the Right NAS. Let's get started with today's webinar. So as I mentioned, today's webinar will be covering the uh, what, what would be the right criteria for choosing the uh, right NAS for your home. Uh, we're going to be, uh, again, the agenda for today's uh, webinar will be covering Again, what would be the what would be some scenarios that we'll be looking at for choosing the right NAS, like entry level usage, advanced NAS applications, and some uh, some featured models as well for those applications as well. Uh, for when you when you when you're looking for a NAS, what is it is very important to look at some important features such as capacity, CPU, connectivity, and some more other features as PCI expansions and other features as well. Starting with capacity. First, you need to you need to decide how to how much storage you require, and based off that, you can decide number of bays to choose. For example, if you require a high level storage, uh, maybe 10 terabytes or 20 terabytes and above, then you may need to get a higher bay NAS, so you can have more capacity with your NAS as well. A four bay NAS can uh, with now we actually support up to 18 terabytes on each bay, so that can give you a high capacity um, of um, when having a higher bay NAS, it gives you higher capacity when choosing the NAS. And also it gives you flexibility of choosing your own rate with higher, with two bay NAS, you can go with rate one, uh, which gives you redundancy for one drive. Uh, with four or more bay NAS, it can give you better options such as rate five, rate six, rate 10, that gives you more drive redundancy in case of multiple drives to go back. Um, also, if you wanna, if you, again, if you want, more redundancy than higher number of bays are recommended. For CPU and RAM, it would depend upon scenarios such as uh, if you're looking for just for a basic backup NAS then, or then entry level NAS with the ARM CPU uh, with two gigabytes of RAM is sufficient enough to, uh, uh, to, uh, to be a backup device for your computers, for your phones and other devices as well. It can also be a file server for small businesses uh, that, um, that can, uh, that can be again. Okay, it can be a file server to store your files for for your small business. Uh, but upgrading the RAM a little bit more, like four gigabytes, can give you more users can be online on your on your NAS as well. If you're looking for running uh, applications such as media server, like Plex media servers or any other media servers, then maybe an x86 based NAS like an Intel or AMD CPU would be recommended. Um, uh, such as because it, uh, with Intel and AMD CPUs, what you can do is when you try, when you actually stream the videos, it can actually uh, it can actually be able to convert the video if it's not compatible. So if let's say if you have an uh, for example uh, if you have an MKV video and it's not compatible with your Apple devices, uh, it can it can convert while you're actually playing back the video into an MP4 format. And also you can also do other resolution as well. There's another slide where you can go through what um why would you want uh, transcoding but again an, uh, an amd and intel cpu would be recommended in case if you're looking for a media streaming device other con other considerations would be connectivity right most nas now come with one gigabyte connectivity and our newer models um that we are coming out that's uh, so also many of our current models that we have posted on our website would also now support 2.5 gigabit gigabit connectivity this gives you high, double the speed that uh, that one gigabyte gives you, but with an existing cable. So you, need, do, you don't need to upgrade your cable. You just have to upgrade your switches and your NAS to 2.5 gigabit and also your computers. So you can actually have more than double the speeds that you have with one gigabit connectivities. Um, and it should be more than sufficient enough for most of the scenarios, even such scenarios such as media streaming and other uh, file servers um, that can be sufficient enough for, uh, for those applications as well. For NAS that require high-speed connectivity, such as video editing off of the NAS, because now we can actually do video editing off of the NAS, uh, uh, then maybe a 10 gigabit connectivity would be recommended. So a NAS with 10 gigabit connectivity would be recommended for uh, if you want to uh, edit videos off of uh, directly off of the NAS. Uh, with our NASs also have PCI uh, slots for scenarios such as if you're looking for running VMs off of the NAS or you, re you require virtual machines running on the NAS and you require some graphic processing, uh, you can, with PCI NAS or PCI slot that, uh, in, inside a NAS, you can actually run an NVIDIA 
uh, GPU or in, you can install an NVIDIA, NVIDIA GPU and then you can actually get um, a GPU or graphics capabilities on your VM. And also uh, with PCI expansion slots, you can install a QM2 card. A QM2 card allows you to have uh, M.2 SSDs with, uh, within, the, within, within the NAS. So you can use SSD uh, for caching in case if you and you don't have to sacrifice this, uh, sacrifice your base. You can actually use an extra SSD, uh, PCI card that you can install M.2s on them, and then you can use that for caching. So you can get better speeds out of the NAS uh, without sacrificing a front panel bay. Uh, also, in rare, uh, also not many manufacturers now provide you the ability to have HDMI port. With QNAP, most many of our NAS come with HDMI, HDMI port that you can actually connect a monitor or TV, and you can use it for with your VMs. So you can actually use your NAS as a computer, just connect the keyboard and mouse using the USB port and the, a monitor and TV and spin up a VM on your uh, QNAP NAS and you can use your NAS as if it's just a regular computer. Um, you can also watch videos using video, using video station, watch, listen to music, use a music station. And also if you're using this NAS for surveillance purposes, you can actually you run QVR Pro using HDMI cable and then you can actually look at some of your cameras using the NAS itself. So don't, you, don't, you don't need to run another computer just to look at your videos. Just connect the monitor or TV onto back of your NAS and you can look at your uh, cameras as well. Lastly, we, we recommend to look at our drive compatibility list to make sure to ensure that you have compatible drives with your NAS. Let's look at some scenarios for an entry-level usage for a NAS itself. A common usage for a NAS is shared storage for your small business. A NAS can be a storage server for all your users and they can save their work on the NAS for backup and security. So if you're running a small file, a small office in your, in, in, your, in, your, in your business, you can actually, a NAS is a great addition because you can actually have your users work directly off of the NAS for, for files like Word documents, Excel documents. Instead of saving, the, saving them on the computers, they can just save it directly on the NAS and they can work off them directly off the NAS. So again, that gives you the ability, so in case of the computer uh, crashes and in case there's a major issues with the computer, they have a backup of that file onto the QNAP NAS and also security purposes, uh, sec security purposes as well, right? Because the file is not on their local or the personal computer when the laptop or computer, again, if it's a laptop and they take it home, the file is not no longer available to them because it's on it's saved securely on the NAS. So that's another great feature of the NAS itself. Uh, if 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 you need to share large files, users can simply provide a link for that particular file to other users instead of attaching or uploading to a cloud server and providing the link there. So in case because the files is already on the NAS, you can just use your QNAP NAS to share a link to that particular document and share it to external customers or to another coworker that is in the office, instead of having, having them, instead of having you to download that file, attach it to your email, and then send it out to your coworker or to external customers, you can just, or you can just use file station on the QNAP NAS, share a link, and just provide that link to other coworkers or external customers so that they can download it directly onto their computers as well. Another great usage for your NAS would be uh, as a map drive on Windows or mounted on a folder via SMB or AFB on Mac as well as Linux as well. Uh, this allows large storage on your Mac with small HDD uh, and you can use the space for storing your data or work on the, uh, on, on the NAS directly. Uh, on the PC, it will look just like a regular folder, but you're actually working directly off the NAS. This is a great, um, uh, this is again, great works for, um, for works for users who work a lot with, uh, with video editing documents or uh, file, uh, Excel sheets or Word sheets. Uh, again, the, um, what happens with that is on the computer and Mac, it will just it will just look like another folder that is on the, on that computer. But that folder is actually directly from the NAS. So when they're working on that folder, they're actually working directly on the NAS. So anything they save within that folder or anything that they open within that folder, it's actually open directly from the NAS. So they don't need to worry about having to copy it back to your back to the computer and then back to the NAS. Anything that that they save on that folder is actually open. It's actually saved directly on the NAS. So, 
So everything is saved. They don't, they don't need to ensure that that folder is there on the on the NAS or not. As soon as you open that folder on the uh, as soon as you open that map drive or the shared folder on the Mac, all that data that's stored within that folder is directly on the NAS itself. A great usage for the NAS would be a uh, user backup, right? Uh, many of our users use their NAS for backing up their uh, computers. Uh, again, it's a great tool to, to have to ensure that you have a backup of your data from your PC or Mac onto your NAS. So in case if you lose or accidentally delete anything on, on your computers, you always have a copy on your NAS. So for Windows users, you can use their file with three feature um, that is available on Windows 10, Windows 8, Windows uh, 11 computers as well, and to back up your file directly onto the NAS. And for Mac users, they can use Time Machine backups as well. These backups are, these backups are done automatically on, in the background. So you don't need to uh, run a special tool within the computer. This is all done automatically, and you can they can back and the backup happens in the background and it will always be back. All your data will be backed up directly on the NAS. So you don't, again, no need to run any additional software within the computer as well. And for phones as well, a, a, great, a NAS can be a great backup tool for your, for your phones. With QFile application, you can automate your backups of your photos and videos on the NAS. Um, on the NAS. QFile, uh, QFile will back up your photos and videos taken automatically uh, so without having to open the app. So the Q file can run in the background to back up all your videos and photos uh, that you take while you're traveling um, and all it, it, will, that it will be done automatically onto the NAS. Um, the app also has a feature to either select cellular network or Wi-Fi only to save your data. So in case if you're traveling and you have limited data, you can actually ask QNAP to not upload your videos and photos while, while it's on your cellular and it's on your cellular network. Once you reach, once once you reach your hotel or a wi or, or location that has a Wi-Fi network, and your phone joins to that Wi-Fi, Q5 will automatically start uploading your photos and videos that you have taken uh, within that trip uh, onto the NAS directly. Again, uh, phone backup is a great tool, not to in, not just to ensure that you have a copy of your photos and videos taken, but also to ensure that you can remove these photos and videos from your phone to free up some space free up some, uh, some spaces on your device. Again, because nowadays phone, um, uh, phones come with a, a smaller storage space, like 64 gigabytes or 128 gigabytes, and the file sizes are growing because now you're taking actually, you're actually taking high resolution photos or high resolution videos, like 4K videos. Those 64 gigs or 120 gigs can be, can be used up really, really quickly. If you have a NAS and you can upload these videos and photos that you've taken onto the NAS, you can you can always delete that from from your phones so you have extra space uh, available and you don't need to pay any monthly subscription fee because your NAS is already uh, within your within your location to back up all these devices so no need to pay for Google Photos or no need to pay for iCloud you just have to make sure that you have QFile application and a QNAP NAS um, and with hard drive cost uh, the hard drive space is increasing like. You have 10 terabyte, 12 terabyte, 16 terabyte hard drives. You can actually have a large cloud storage server that is sitting in your home. For entry level NAS, you can actually do video media streaming as well. Like you can stream your videos and photos uh, from your NAS onto your TV, and you can also share them uh, on your network as well. You just cannot do transcoding, so you cannot convert. You, you have to ensure that your videos and photos are in proper format that your TVs can play them. But if the TVs are able, to, like for example, best example, if you have a NAS that cannot do transcoding, then we ensure that we would like to make sure that you put in, you convert your videos automatically into an MP4 format, because MP4 format can be played back with, uh, is compatible with a, a large range of devices, like Apple devices can play MP4 devices. Most of the TVs are able to play MP4 devices. So if, you're, if your videos and photos are already in proper format, even an entry-level NAS can be able to stream that video to your TV or to your phones without having to convert that video. So those are some scenarios for uh, an entry-level NAS. So let's look at some examples for advanced NAS applications as well. For NASs with x86-based CPU, such as such as an Intel or AMD CPU, you can do um, you can do media streaming with on-the-fly transcoding. 
On the file transcoding allows the NAS to convert the file so that the device that is streaming on or streaming from is able to play back the video. For example, not all devices are able to play back MKV files, especially uh, like Apple devices. They, don't, they cannot play back MKV files, and which are usually, usually associated with ripped Blu-ray files. So M MKV files is usually ripped Blu-ray files. So when you try to play back with an Apple device, it may throw out an error. Uh, or it may not, and it will be unable to play back the file. With QNAP NAS, um, such as uh, with QNAP NAS and an app such as Plex Media Streaming, it, it can automatically convert the video from MKV to a more compatible format, like an like an MP4 format, while while you're actually playing back the video, which is on the fly transcoding, and you can and, and it ensures that you can uh, you are able to watch the video or movie without having to convert the file yourself. Uh, all you have to do is copy that MKV file into the NAS, and the Plex will temporarily convert the video while you're playing back the file. Another great, great example of on-the-fly transcoding is resolution. If you're traveling and you have uh, you are in a hotel or airport which does not have a good internet connection, QNAP can help convert that high-resolution video, such as a 4K movie or 4K file, into a, a more smaller resolution, a more playback playable resolution on a lower quality Wi-Fi connection, such as 480p or 720p, so that, so that even if when you don't have a good internet connection, you can, you're still able to watch your movies or videos without having, without having to do buffer or without having to wait for the video to be converted. Again, this all happens on the fly, uh, which, which means that you don't have to convert it yourself. The Plex will do the uh, heavy lifting for you and will convert the video for you while you actually play back the video. Another great feature that you can use with QNAP NAS is virtualization. With virtualization, you can, quick, you can quickly spin up your VM on top of your NAS for different purposes. You can run a VM to run specific applications that require additional hardware. For example, if you have a database server and, and you have a physical server that is running on your NAS, uh, you can actually run that on top of the NAS and eliminate that physical server that's running on your network. You can, you can eliminate a lot of physical servers when you have a, when, if it can run on a VM, so like DHCP servers. A lot of our customers use a virtualization to run DHCP servers for, net, for their network. They can run DNS server for their network. Um, so again, they can they can eliminate physical servers and save some um, you know, some power usage uh, on their network, and they can run that off of the NAS. And also, it's easy to manage because everything is managed under one and uh, one umbrella, which is your QNAP NAS. You can also spin up a VM such as Linux, Ubuntu, Windows, or even Android just for testing new operating system. So if there's a new operating system, for example, there's a Windows 11 that's when, that's coming out. It's already out, actually. Uh, you can actually download that ISO file. You can actually spin up that Windows 11 on top of the QNAP NAS to actually experience that new operating system or test your uh, test that new operating system. Also, if you're if you're an app or software developer, you can actually use the VM to test your applications or software in a very controlled environment. And also with virtualization, you can control how much CPU cores and RAM is needed for a VM. And you can also run multiple VMs. If you have a NAS that has higher core count or higher RAM, you can actually run multiple VMs on using virtualization station. QNAM also provides another great feature on your NAS. Um, it's called it's also it's called photo recognition with QU Magi. With QNAP's QU Magi, you can start using AI photo recognition to organize your photos based on fa facial facial recognition, location, uh, or even objects. Photos grouped by people, object, places, and events as well. With QNAP NAS, you can easily search for uh, search your large photo library with many different criteria. For example, I can use I can ask QU Magi to search for photos for birds or um, or pictures taken in New York, um, or even search for my, for my dad's picture as well. So I, again, uh, the AI recognition will automatically search for, for your photo library for photos of any birds or photos of, of that are taken in New York or photos for my dad as well. And it can display that information to you. Again, all this is done all, all done automatically within the QNAP NAS after you install QU Magi application. Similarly for photos, we also have a search utility called QSearch for your file. So QUMagic does basically photo recognition, but QSearch does a library of your, all your files that are stored within the net. Doesn't matter if it's a photo, video, or document. It 
it indexes that data within the QNAP NAS. You can use QSearch to search for stored files within the NAS or within the QNAP. You can quickly perform a search on, on your entire NAS um, and the QNAP will provide that results result into uh, or information of that file. And also it can give you a link directly to that to open that file from your NAS itself. You can, with Q, QNAP QSearch, you can look within the file and find with um so QNAP Q search can look within the file so it doesn't it just does not look for file name if you do not remember a file name QNAP actually looks within the document to look for that particular uh particular data that you have searched so if you're looking for any file that has the word called uh search or uh or version uh QNAP will look within the file to find that to find that particular file and also it can do image search within the QNAP as well. And lastly, the last scenario that I would like to go over is video editing directly from the QNAP NAS. QNAP provides different connection methods and speeds for editing off of the NAS directly. Some things to consider when using when you're looking for a NAS for editing purposes is making sure they have an x86 x86 based processor such as Intel or AMD processor that has multiple cores, maybe four core or quad core or and above. Um, drives, especially as uh, drives, uh, especially SSD drives that can be used for caching. So you can still have regular hard drives for uh, for your large storage, but a couple of SSD drives can help boost performance and um, also can can help you uh, have multiple multiple editors off of the NAS as well. As I mentioned before, you can use QM2 cards to use M.2s uh, uh, using PCIe slots. And also, most of the NAS also come with M.2 slots within the NAS. So you can install high-speed M.2 drives for caching purposes as well. Also, most of the NAS now comes with 2.5 gigabit connectivity, so you can do light video, lightweight editing off of the NAS. But you have, if you have a NAS with PCI slots, you can actually upgrade your NAS to 10 gigabit cards for getting high-speed connectivity for large editing jobs. And also, even multiple editors can be connected at the same time. Lastly, we are the only NAS manufacturer that actually provides Thunderbolt connectivity for certain models. So you can actually have a direct test storage as an option for uh, using Thunderbolt 3 connectivity and also Thunderbolt, com Thunderbolt, Thunderbolt 4 coming soon. All right, so uh, that is it. We're going to be lo looking at some live demos right now. Or, or Cody. So, yeah, I'm Cody. And for our live demo, we wanted to give uh, kind of a breakdown of some basic usage uh, for both, both in terms of what an entry level model can do and also then some applications that would give reason for you to uh, spend a little bit more money and, and get a, a more powerful NAS. So we'll start off with just some basic usage. Starting with a simple, Simple file sharing, specifically uh, mounting shared folders with the SMB protocol. Um, and so I'm working off of a Mac here, so it'll look a little bit different on Windows, but it's the uh, same idea though. So what you would do, you just go to the Go tab, then connect to server. And here you can just put in the IP address of your particular NAS, as long as the protocol, in this case SMB, uh, you can also use AFP um, or other uh, file sharing protocols. And then you'll click connect. And if you're not sure about the, well, you'll need the IP address to log into your NAS anyhow, but if you weren't sure, um, you can help get it from the QVR Pro. Uh, this is not uh, connected right now, but you can just run it and you'll be able to see the various IP addresses on the NAS and, or, or for the various NASs on your network. And then you can just input that here. So I'll just connect. And then you'll put the credentials for the NAS that you're using
and then we can mount whichever uh, shared folder. These are the various shared folders on the NAS that I'm using. Uh, so we can just use public here. And so then if I take over uh, my finder, we can find it right here. And you can just open this up and you can drag and drop um, whichever files you might want to drag and drop or pull over. And this is also a way that you can work off of the NAS. Um, so like if you're video editing or something, you can have your shared folder uh, where you want the storage to go and the caches to go mounted here on, on your computer. And then you can select that as the storage, uh, similar to if you're using an external drive, uh, you'll just see it come up right there. And if I open up, say this Excel file, um, I could just edit right off of this file. And say if I start at nine till 12 at lunch or something, um, that, that will edit on the actual file here. So it's a good way to work off of your NAS and it's a, it's a good way to just move folders and make backups. And then another way that you'll see it is in your just regular NAS interface. In the QTS interface, you can go to File Station and you'll see these same uh, shared folders here and be able to manage everything here as well. And another thing is, um, of course, uh, QNAP is great for if you're just using it as a single user, but you can also create multiple users in the general settings. If you go to privilege users, you can create various uh, additional users and you can change the permissions. So you can ha have permissions for uh, varying uh, shared folders. So if you want to have uh, one person with access to one folder, uh, another group of people access to another, uh, you can set that up however you want that to be done. Um, and then I also just want to mention that, uh, of course, we've already configured and installed this NAS that we're using, uh, but you will select your RAID uh, configuration at that point and uh, so that can give you uh, data redundancy in case of drive fails. And also you could go into storage and snapshots and it might just take a moment, but you can go to the storage snapshots section and on, for whichever volume you choose, you can create a, uh, you can create a snapshot. And what that would do is it will, uh, keep a record of your data at a point in time. So that can protect your data. If you accidentally delete something, you can roll back to it. Or um, for some uh, some malware attacks, it can also help you restore your data uh, depending. And we also have a malware remover. Uh, so with all of these um, kind of data security uh, implementations, these are all things you can implement with a basic NAS. Um, you, so you can have a lot of solid just file sharing functionality, uh, managing multiple users, uh, managing your security. Uh, a lot of that all comes with just a basic entry level model. Um, but if we want to go into uh, going into something a little more advanced, I want to open up QMagi. And this is what we use for our, our photos. And in recent years, we've begun to um, start working on facial recognition and object recognition. Uh, so if we go to albums, you can see people here. Uh, so we've got me right here, got a few photos of me and a few other uh, just kind of random examples. If you click here, you can say, who is this? So if it gets some picture that it doesn't recognize, now you can select one of the people that's already in here, if it's like, oh, that's actually me, I could put that. Um, 
and then it'll just group that person as that person or you can just type if it's someone new whoever that person is and then also you can upload so we can see i have three photos here uh, that are categorized as me if i could upload um say if i upload one from my download from my computer I can upload a new file and then once it's uploaded if I just refresh now you're gonna see four photos here and it's um, it's classified uh, my photo it's already it already knows who I am and it has grouped me appropriately and so uh, we also have recognition for things and uh, and then through just the metadata, you can see like uh, photos based on places and things of that nature. And if we go to the general page, you can also kind of scroll according to timeline. You can see on here, uh, so just based on the metadata that the photos have when you take them, you can scroll according to the time. And so that's um that's QMAGI. that's our our photo management system that integrates with um, with facial recognition and with object recognition uh the next thing and of course for that um facial recognition you will need uh additional cpu power so that is something uh and that you would want a little bit more advanced uh, NAS than just the basic models. Opening up Plex. Um, if you don't know what Plex is, this is usually the preferred uh, streaming uh, platform that people use uh, for their NAS. If they want to uh, stream movies, stream TV shows from their NAS, uh, if you're using the QNAP as a multimedia server, uh, Plex is kind of a go-to. And so we we integrate with Plex uh, very nicely. Um, here you can see if we go to the movies, we click here, you can see different like quality, language, and Plex also allows for transcoding. And that's another area where you would want more power. Uh, like Deval was mentioning in his uh, in his presentation. Uh, some files might not be able to play on various devices. And so if you want to transcode it in real time as you're watching it without adjusting the file or anything like that, uh, you're going to want on, on the fly transcoding. And so there's both software transcoding and hardware transcoding. And if you usually for the higher resolution, like 4K, and above, you're going to want the hardware transcoding. Uh, the software is not going to be, um, be be powerful enough for 4K usually. And so with that, you would need a Plex Pass. I believe you can purchase one from Plex for $120 if you want it for a lifetime subscription. And, uh, and then for software transcoding, you can do it for free. And then from our end, on the QNAP end, uh, you would want an Intel processor for hardware transcoding um, and probably something at least like a, a good, decent quad-core Celeron processor and, and better. Um, so if it's just software transcoding, you can do, use a different type of NAS. And then if you're not transcoding at all, if you want to just uh, you know stream directly, then you could use a more entry-level NAS. Um, and Plex also includes like podcasts, music. Uh, so you could store a lot of different things, your, your podcast, music, you've got movies, a lot of stuff going on with that. And it's also cool because if you're, you, if you're streaming off of Plex rather than uh, say your Netflix, you can, in your home, you can just stream it directly from your local network. So you don't necessarily have to go out to the, to the internet. So if you have a lot of uh, people in your house 
wanting to use the internet, maybe you have someone gaming or something, um, this can kind of free up a little bit of that internet bandwidth as well. So that's Plex and it's uh, highly recommended for home media servers and uh, we integrate with it very nicely. Um, and then the next uh, more advanced application I wanted to uh, show you guys is our QSearch. And this is basically a search engine for your NAS. It, I, I would recommend it for a little bit more powerful, like, and maybe at least like, I would recommend about eight gigabytes of RAM. Although we have gone light here and made it uh, a little bit lighter weight over time, uh, it, it still does take up a, a bit of usage and it has to index you know, your files and so, it is kind of a powerful application that we recommend a higher grade NAS. So if I just uh, search, say QNAP, just like any type of search device, it will search not just the title, but also like within here, you can see that this is the QNAP timesheet. So it's showing up on the search. Uh, we've got QNAP College here. QNP339, one of our uh, QNAP college videos. And then if I want to just search more specifically Q, QNP339, then I'll, I'll just probably get just that video. Um, and so it, it's just really nice if you need to find a file quickly and you're not sure where it is, this this will get you there. And you can also filter your searches as well by size, by time, uh, various things of that nature. And for if there is an, a premium version of this, uh, which you would just purchase in the store, but that allows you to integrate with the facial recognition. So then you could search for Cody or uh, something like that within here. And it's not just gonna show like documents that might say Cody in it or what have you, but it also integrate with the pictures um, and, and integrate with uh, both facial recognition and object rec recognition. And then finally, I wanted to just, um, outside of the NAS, if you are looking for the NAS, I, I wanted to make you guys aware of a little tool on our website that you can use that I think is very helpful for uh, ch checking different NAS. And so you go to our website, you go to products, you go to product comparison, right, where we are. And this is probably the best way to get specifics on what you're looking for. And, and you can also filter, like if you're looking for Intel, you can filter specifically for that or AMD, et cetera. You can filter by connection types if you need 10 gigabit or if you need Thunderbolt. And it typically goes from the more high-end enterprise level at the top and then goes down from there as you lower. And so if you open up a page, say 453D. Here you can get our little like marketing spiel here and see some of the features that we feel are important and useful. And then if you just want like specific like breakdowns, uh, you can go to the specifications. And so this is what's nice if, if you wanna be like, oh, what, what connectivity does that model have? Does that model support NVMe, does that model support M.2 SSDs? Does it support 2.5 gigabit? What, everything. So this is what will give you all of the details that you want to find in a particular NAS model. Uh, you can also check expansion uh, units. You can check here what expansion units are compatible. If you wanna add storage, compatibility for like drives and things of that nature. Um, and then 
also under the specifications, you can go to package contents and you can actually see what would be included with this NAS. Also, if we go to the main page, back to, you can do a, a comparison as well. So if you want to compare some different NAS, click down here and you can compare uh, the various uh, specifications of NAS models that you might be looking at. So with that, that pretty much concludes what I wanted to show you guys. Um, and so we are going to transition into a question and answer time and uh, Deval is going to uh, help us uh, field some of those questions. So um, I'm gonna hand it back over to Deval and uh, we, we'd love to, uh, to answer any questions that you might have. All right, thank you very much, Cody. All right, so this is a good time to ask any questions uh, if you guys have for this uh, current uh, webinar. Or if you guys have any, have any questions for Kina in, in general, but um, we do have a few questions uh, that I would like to uh, cover today. Uh, first, of, first question would be um, the new Seagate Iron Wolf 20 terabyte drives. Will, that, will the NAS be supporting them? Um, so I I believe it should be supported because we did uh, we did end up having 20 ter uh, 18 terabyte uh, uh, listed after release pretty soon. So I think Kina right now or oh, uh, R&D is working on uh, testing these new drives and they should be available pretty soon on our existing and newer models uh, uh, for uh, for use as well, for compatibility as well. Um, another question is uh, if I wanted to, if I wanted a reliable 40K digital photo and also want to use an external drive as extra safety precaution, is, is, any, is there any downside of using RAID 10 in a four bay NAS? So if you, so for this question, if you, if your primary goal is a backup for a, for a four bay NAS rather than performance, then instead of going with a RAID 10, I would actually go with the RAID 6, um, RAID 6 setup because with RAID 10, you still get two drive redundancy, but the way RAID 10 works is that it pairs drive one and two and three and four and so on and so forth with larger bay NAS. So let's say for example, if you lose one drive one and three, at the same time, you're okay with that. Uh, the rate 10 will still be working and your data will still be available. But if you lose, let's say drive one and two together or three and four together, then you may end up losing all the data. So for a four bay NAS, rate 10 may not be the best option. For a four bay NAS, I would recommend getting rate six that allows you to have two drive redundancy and doesn't matter what two drives you lose, you still have, um, you still have your data intact. So doesn't matter if you lose one and two or three and four or one and three, doesn't matter what, what configuration you lose drives in, as long as you have two drives up and running, you still have your data saved. So that's another, um, so that's the reason I recommend rate six for your setup. Uh, what version of OS is running on the demo system uh, that we just showcased QTS 5.0, which is released. Uh, we do recommend upgrading to the latest version that, is, that was released yesterday. Um, so you can download them today. Um, a different question is to back up uh, remote computers, uh, remote Windows devices onto a NAS uh, on my local network, what approaches is best? Uh, is it to use DDNS on the NAS and to keep the address persistence? So yes. Um, so we recommend using DDNS for any remote connection. So when you use DDNS, what happens is that if you're, if you're local, if you're, if you're net, if the network where the QNAP is located at, if the IP address of that network changes, QNAP will automatically update that with the new IP address. So your network is always up and running. So DDNS allows you to do that as well. And also instead of remembering an, a string of numbers like 10.1.10.107.104, so that complicated set of numbers, you just have to remember a name that you have given, an easy name that you can give to your name, uh, to your, to your uh, to your NAS. So my, for example, my NAS is ddp872x.myqnapcloud.com. So it's easy for me to remember DD, ddp872x instead of remembering 107.24.100 or something like that. Also, when you, if you want to back up your remote computers, 
the, the backup tools that I was referring to before, like Time Machine or Windows 11 backup, or Windows 10 backups, don't, don't those won't work for remote locations. So you may may need to rely on third-party applications, or we also have an application called QSync. QSync is like a Dropbox type application that allows you to sync a particular folder on the NAS. So it can automatically sync anything you put in that folder onto the NAS. So it's kind of a backup tool that you can actually use within the QNAP NAS and you can install these applications remotely as well. Another question was, will, will this intelligence work for videos too? So I, I think I'm, you're referring to the QU Magi app. Currently it's only available for, uh, for photos. Um, video recognition is not yet available. Another question is, is this being recorded so, I, so that I can finish watching later? Yes, this will be recorded uh, and there will be a follow-up email with this, uh, with a link to play back the video. Another question is, where can I get support to configure my QNAP NAS? So uh, the best way is you can uh, use our support website to um, look at the FAQ sections. We have some, many support links, like a YouTube ch uh, uh, channel as well, to give you like step-by-step step 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 guide on how to configure your QNAP NAS. But if you want to talk to a live person, we do have a live chat on our support website, or you can call us at 909-595-2782, option two. That number is also listed on our website as well. So you can, and then you can speak to any of our live uh, support technician to help you guide on, on get a guide on how to set up your NAS as well. Uh, another question is how to set up QNAP for home? Um, no, just just enough to mess it up. Does QNAP help walk through or set up home installations? So as I mentioned before, this going, goes back to the previous question. Um, we do have a lot of how-to guides um, on our website um, that you can actually go through. Um, let me see if I can show you any of these information. Yeah, so under support, uh, we have a lot of, uh, again, you have these download utilities, we have technical support uh, where you can contact our technical support, uh, uh, technical support users um, uh, or technical support for, uh, for getting more help. We have, video, we have tutorials, we have video tutorials that allows you to, uh, you know, get guide on how to set up your NAS. If you want to set up a specific applications, we have a lot of uh, specified applications that you can uh, that can guide you helping your NAS. Or, or for beginners, we have a special link that help you set up your uh, set up a NAS for beginners as well. As I mentioned, going back to support, we have a lot of video tutorials as well that can guide you on how to set up your NAS as well. So a lot of a uh, lot of tutorials that you can go through when setting up your NAS. Another question is, would the 870, uh, the TSH, uh, TSH 973AX would work, would be good for having around two to three VMs running 24 seven. So yeah, that's a good NAS with, uh, with, uh, uh, with has an, and with 32 gigabytes RAM, it should have enough RAM to run multiple uh, VM server. But again, that does depend upon what type of application, applications you're running within the VM. So if it's a lightweight VM, uh, you should be able to run two to three VMs, no problem. Uh, but it's a very, if it's a very happily, heavy application, then you may end up, you may have some issues with those VMs. So it's a four core, eight thread processor. So if you're if you're allowing two to three cores per VM, then it should be okay. Uh, but again, it does depend upon uh, what type of applications you're running within that particular VM. With the uh, with four bay, does it work? Uh, another question is with four bay, does it work okay with a pair of eight and a pair of larger drives? With the four bay, does it work with okay with a pair of eight terabytes and a pair of uh, larger drives? I think that's what you're mentioning. With QNAP NAS, we don't recommend mixing drives when you're trying to set up a RAID system. But if you if you if you have a pair of eight terabytes on a pair of different size drives, then we recommend two RAID one systems, and that should work no problem. You just, you you will just have two different volumes to deal with. One is an eight terabyte volume, and one is a larger drive volume. For example, if you talk about sixteen terabyte, then you have one volume which is RAID RAID one volume eight terabytes, and you have a RAID one volume which is sixteen terabytes. So another question is. Uh, uh, use uh, use for video editing with a via eight gig, ten gigabyte internet connection. I mean, if you if you are able to find ten gigabyte internet connection, uh, that you can actually do video editing with with 
uh, with your QNAP NAS, you have to make sure you have 10 gigabyte internet connection from where you're accessing the NAS and also at the location where the NAS is located. Because let's say, for example, if you're at home where the NAS is and you're trying to edit off of the NAS, which is at your office, both need to have 10 gigabyte internet connection. Um, so if you do have that, that's great. You can actually do editing with the NAS itself, yeah. How do you advise a novice um, how to start up, uh, how, how to start and set up the NAS? Apple made huge strides in the field with their time capsule products, which sort to make it simple to use. One comment that I hear that a NAS device promises easy setup, but uh, rarely delivers on that promise. So yeah, I understand your concerns. Um, again, a NAS, as a NAS, as a NAS system, it can actually do a lot of uh, things with your with your data. Uh, it's just not a storage system now. Uh, before, it just to, is it will just used to be a storage system that sits your net sits in your network for backup purposes. But now with QNAP, especially with QNAP NAS, if you look at our App Center, you can see a large variety of uh, applications you can install, and that may get complicated. We try to provide you video like tutorials to help you through those features. Um, uh, but again, to start with them, uh, to start setting up the NAS, or st with the start with the QNAP NAS, we recommend going to our support section and go to tutorials, also video tutorials that can help you guide through processes on how to use your NAS to get best out of your NAS. But again, as a NAS, it's it's an application that can that can actually do a lot of a um, lot of things with your data. As I mentioned, as we mentioned, we went through this uh, today in today's webinar. It can be a video streaming device, it can be a VM server. Um, can be a backup server, and this can be done with a single NAS itself. If you have, if you do have a decent, powerful NAS, you can actually do all these with a single device. I do it my at my home. I have a uh, have a x86 based Intel uh, Intel NAS. It's a TBS 8, uh, 872x. I, I I run two VMs on top of that. It's my Plex Media Server. It's my backup device. It's my my computers, my PCs, my family's. Uh, uh, no, my uh, my family's uh, devices as well, and also it's my shared storage for my uh, for my for my family as well. So they they all use it, and it's, it's all done on a single device. So again, that can be done on a on a QNAP NAS. Can I see um can I see a comparison site where QNAP support NVMe order SSD? I think I'm, and, uh, I need to understand this question better, but uh, can I see a comparison site whether a QNAP supports NVMe over SSD? Ha have had a problem that was a slot, but only an SSD recognized, not an NVMe. Uh, if I understand you correctly, I think you're trying to mention something about the M.2 slot within the NAS. Um, so our older generation NASes with M.2, certain models only supported SATA SSDs, not NVMe. So if you're trying to plug in an NVMe, so with, with M.2, you have to understand, not all M.2s are the same. M.2s have two different versions. One is SATA M.2, one is NVMe and M.2s. Our older generation NASs, um, because as the technology was pretty new, um, we weren't able to put M.2 NVMe slots on all the SSD on all of our NASs. So older generation certain NASs do come with M.2 SATA SSDs. So they only recognize SATA SSDs, not NVMe. So if you plug in an NVMe, it will just not recognize anything or may not boot up at all. Um, so if your NAS only recognize SATA SSDs, then it may just be a SATA NVMe uh, M.2 slide uh, slot, not an NVMe slot. Uh, no issues with QNAP and iPads and iPhones. No, our Q5 applications are extend, extensively tested for uh, iPads and iPhones. You should not have any issues with those, um, well, with, with backing up your QNAP iPads and iPhones onto the NAS directly. Uh, for TS653D, what rate do you recommend? Again, uh, uh, that's, a, that's a question that requires more information, but, um, if you if your main primary goal is uh, performance, then rate five would be recommended for anything from four to six base, and anything above rate six would be recommended. Uh, but if you're looking for a balance of performance as well as uh, redundancy, because rate five only gives you one drive redundancy. If you lose one drive, it's okay. But if you lose multiple drives at the same exact time, then you may lose and you may end up losing all data. 
And so if you do want more peace of mind and then still want more storage space, you can go with RAID 6. That still gives you four drives to work with. You can actually save data on four drives and two drives will be, will be your backup drives. So in case we lose, if, if you lose up to two drives, you still have access to all your data. If you lose third drive at the same exact time, the other two drives are still bad, then you may end up losing all data. Another question is, can I upgrade from ARM to an AMD NAS without restoring from backup? So uh, you cannot manually upgrade processes within the motherboard, but if you're trying to, uh, let's say for example, if you're an older ARM NAS, if you're trying to, you can actually purchase a newer uh, AMD NAS from our, uh, from our store. And then um, if it's the same QNAP NAS, then you can actually move your hard drive from your ARM NAS to your QNAP, to a new QNAP NAS. And then you should be, you will be able to see all your data without having to do any backup or restoration at all. QNAP, can, uh, QNAP does have the feature for migration. So you just have to make sure you turn off both devices, move your hard drives to your new NAS and turn on your new NAS after moving all the drives. Once all the drives are moved and you turn on the new NAS, you should be able to see, uh, you should, the only thing you may have to do is update your firmware and then everything should be up and running. If you do, if you, you should be able to see all your data automatically, but if you do have any other screen that it does not show the data, then you, I would highly recommend contacting your support before you do anything else. The TSH973AX 32 gig model in the US is selling for $1,000 on the QNAP US store, but in the Europe it's selling for now for 1,300 euros. Will you have a promotion code for offer for European customers? Um, it's hard question to answer from my end because we do, uh, this webinar is mainly dealing with US, uh, uh, US region, but uh, as, the holiday seasons are coming up that we do, we would run promotions on many of our products for all regions. So expect anything coming up for soon for those, for most of our models. Uh, why are TV, all the TVS models out of stock? Chip shortages? Actually, there are multiple reasons for, uh, for being out of stock. Again, chip shortage is one of them. Also port uh, congestion is another reason that, um, uh, that many of our models are out of stock. Uh, so those combined, we have a lot of stock issues as of yet, and we're trying to we're trying our best to uh, to uh, to get the, these models back in stock. Uh, can you discuss the myths and realities of drive uh, drive mechanisms or SSDs? I think you're trying to mention about. Um, I think you have a follow up question as well. For example, some tech some techs used to recommend drives to be purchased over time or over time. So different manufacturing uh, lots were in use. I've suffered from drive failures with similar manufacturing lots. When a consumer a consumer when a consumer buys a NAP, QNAP NAS, is there a conscious effort to prevent same manufacturing runs for all the QNAP devices in the NAS? Um, that's a uh, that's a good question. When when you double when you actually buying a QNAP NAS, we do recommend buying all the drives at the same exact time so fill up all your base at the same time uh so all your all your all your drives do have the same uh same model of hard drives but but with QNAP NAS let's say for example the QNAP NAS does allow you to add hard drives in the future as as and when you go so you don't have to buy all the drives at the same time so especially when large when you considering large uh higher bay NAS, like a, like an eight bay and above. Uh, so you can actually start, for example, I started my NAS, with, I have an eight bay NAS. I started with my NAS with a four bay NAS, sorry, four bay hard drives. And over the time I keep I kept purchasing additional hard drive to add into my NAS. So you, that is an option. When you do that, the only recommendation that I can give you is make sure you have the same company you're purchasing from. If, you, if, you, if you're purchasing drives from Seagate, we do recommend going with Seagate itself and also stick with the same uh, same series of drives. So Seagate has uh, Seagate has their own NAS drives, um, uh, Iron Wolf drives. So sticking with same series of drives can help uh, can help mitigate any failures in the future for regarding drives um, because Seagate sticks with their technology uh, and they will keep that drive technology consistent with even with newer models. So if you have a newer model, making sure that you have the same series drive. If it's an iron wolf drive, make sure it's an iron wolf drive 
be purchased for the future as well. And that should be that should be fine itself. All right, that is it for all the questions for today. Thank you very much again, everybody. Have a great day.